Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 38, entitled Taxonomic Tags. My name's Tim Warner. Today's objective in the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain starts with the functional group Describe Identity, Governance, Privacy, and Compliance Features. The objective is titled Describe Azure Governance Features, and today's skill is Describe the Functionality and Usage of Tags. What is a taxonomy? I remember having been a biology nerd since middle school that a taxonomy in biology is how you categorize the various kingdoms, phyla, families. I don't remember the names, but it's a classification structure. And taxonomic tags in Azure are just that. It's a classification structure for your Azure resources. Specifically, tags are case-insensitive name value pairs. And we use these to logically organize Azure resources. You should know that taxonomic tags are based in your Azure Active Directory tenant and thus are visible across all subscriptions that trust the tenant. We've seen over the past few lessons in this series that most of the Azure governance features are inheritable, that is, role-based access control role assignments, resource locks. However, taxonomic tags are not inherited by default, and I think that's by design, and it's a good thing, given how important taxonomic tags are, especially to your cost accounting. What do I mean? Well, look at this tagging decision guide that I borrowed from the Microsoft Docs. I'll give you a link to where I borrowed this diagram at the end, like I normally do. But without getting into the fine detail here, Microsoft has a lot of good, solid guidance on the use cases that would lead a business to use taxonomic tags in Azure. For example, there's functional consideration, adding tags that describe the functions of your various resources, whether they're virtual machines, storage accounts, key vault machine learning workspaces, whatever. Pure classification, maybe for data. You have storage accounts that have private confidential data. In the U.S. government, there's the secret classifications. For accounting, that's what I find to be the most popular way to use taxonomic tags, to separate resources according to cost center. Now, this is critical because I know I've worked with customers who thought, wait a minute, I thought resource groups in Azure were how you separate cost center. No, usually it's not that easy. Yes, ideally, you've got your cost centers divided within resource groups, but all too easily, you're going to have the same cost center involving resources that span not only resource groups, but even subscriptions that trust the same Azure AD tenant. Tags provide a nice, logical organizational structure for that. If you're a managed service provider or if you work with contractors and business partners, you can use taxonomic tags to classify resources that are owned by these different partnerships. And lastly, you can use taxonomic tags just to denote purpose, perhaps business units, perhaps different environments, dev test staging, user acceptance testing, production, etc. I hope that this has given you some good imaginative insight with regard to tags. With regard to tagging governance, the main driver here, I think, is Azure policy. Specifically, when you're looking at taxonomic tags, that's one thing in theory. It's another in day-to-day -day practice. You're going to wind up, if you're not using something like Azure policy to enforce tagging conventions, you're going to have colleagues who forget to tag resources. You'll have colleagues who mistype tag names or values. You might also have colleagues who add incorrect tag info. All of those are potentially devastating problems, particularly when you're rounding up resources, doing forecasting and costing, which you can do in the Azure portal in the cost management and billing blade, go to cost analysis, and you can use tags to chart your spend. These sorts of errors can cost your business real money. I submit that taxonomic tagging is certainly another example of a training issue. As far as reference training issues, I'm thinking of multi-factor authentication or MFA that we looked at earlier in this series. The wise and studious use of tags is another one. I'll show you in the demo how we can integrate Azure policy to enforce tag governance. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you the basics of using taxonomic tags in Microsoft Azure. Now, the low-tech approach is the manual approach in which you can go to a management scope. And by now, if you've been following my lessons sequentially, you know about management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, and ultimately individual resources. I'm going to go to the resource group scope, and I'll go to my Tim resource group. We can see right over here on the overview page any taxonomic tags that 
I've applied to the resource group. We have stated the fact that these do not inherit, which means that if I select any individual item or resource within this resource group, I'm going to pick on this key vault. We can see if we go to tags, there's nothing here because Microsoft made the decided intentional decision not to do inheritance. And that's a good thing because what if you accidentally put a cost center tag on a subscription where it should have just been on a resource group? Your accounting people are going to have a fit when they run a report in Azure and see all these unexpected resources show up. It's another issue, actually, to delete taxonomic tags. That's another kettle of fish. I'll put up a link to the Azure Docs right on your screen that you can go to if you want more information on that. But in the meantime, we can go over to the Tags blade on the resource group, and you can have up to 15 tags. And when I say a tag, I'm talking about a name value pair per resource. Some administrators feel that's too strict and they want to go beyond 15. I, as an Azure architect, believe simpler is better. 15 should be okay. So if I open the pick list, I'm going to see any previously created tags that I or any of my colleagues have created. Again, these are going to show up for all subscriptions that trust the same Azure Active Directory tenant. So I might choose Cost Center, and Nashville is a previous one, but maybe I have a new Cost Center called Memphis. Note that as long as I have read-write access to the scope, I can modify, add, or even potentially delete tags from that resource. This brings up important issues, like I said in the lecture portion of this course. Like, what if we did something like Project, but I put an extra T in there? Ouch. And I'm going to say this is Project X, and I'm going to actually save that change. If I open the pick list, there is a legitimate project name already defined. So already we can see an inconsistency. How do you report on tags? Well, one way directly in the portal is to go to the tags blade. This is kind of a global view where you can just run a quick report on a given tag. And as you can see here, I've got project and project with two T's. Aha, how do we solve this? Well, as I said, and if you, again, you've been following these lessons, you know a little bit about Azure policy by now, don't you? And if I go over to assignments, you're going to see that I've actually applied two built-in policies. One called require a tag and its value on resources. Another called inherit a tag from the resource group if missing. First, let me show you the require a tag and its value on resources. This is, as I said, a built-in policy that I've provided parameters for that any resources created within that Tim resource group have to have the class AZ900 tag. And guess what? Azure policy will add it if it's not already there because I've defined as part of this policy what's called a remediation task. A remediation task is where you give Azure permission to modify resources. And this is only going to be in effect for Azure policies that use either the deploy if not exist or modify effect. You can see that it's got the inherited tag from the resource group if it's missing. That one has 32 resources to remediate. Let's click in here and see what else Azure has to say about this. Well, it's giving us a run of all of the resources that are currently out of compliance in the Microsoft Azure Sponsorship TIM resource group. And in order to trip this off, I'm going to click Remediate to instruct Azure Policy to go ahead and fix that issue for us. In the meantime, if I come back to Assignments, I also have the Require a tag and its value on resources. There's Inherit it and Require. Now, I could very well have rolled both of these related policies into an initiative and done just one assignment. But the require a tag and its value will actually deny a deployment if you don't include the appropriate tag. I'm going to test that right now by creating a quick storage account. I normally use storage accounts to pick on when I'm testing. And I'll accept all of the defaults in it. First of all, I'll make sure that I'm storing it in my Tim resource group because that's where my policy is scoped. I'll give it a name, AZ900 storage, and then with a whole bunch of integers. I'm in East US, that's true. I'll leave everything at the default and I'll step to the tags page and I'll decidedly not include the class AZ900 name value pair. So we'll validate says validation passed. If we click create, let's see what happens next. It looks like the deployment actually started. I'm kind of surprised to be perfectly honest with you. It could be that even though we have that deny policy that says any resources that don't have that tag should be denied, it could be that the tag's going to automatically be added by a remediation task. Let's go to the resource and check it out. Yep, 
sure enough, you can see that Azure Policy automatically added the class AZ900. Really, there was no magic about it. And come to think of it, I probably want to rethink how I've done my policies because the one that denies seems to be entirely irrelevant because I have that remediation task that takes care of applying the tag elsewhere in that resource group. That's the final thing we'll check before I close this demo. Let's jump on over to the Tim resource group one more time and let me find that key vault that we looked at earlier and let's verify that it's in compliance. Here it is, Tim key vault 001. Go to tags and there it is, class AZ900. Good deal. Here's the demo. For learning resources, the tagging decision guide link in the Microsoft Docs is timw.info forward slash TTA1. If you want more information on using Azure Policy to enforce taxonomic tags, go to timw.info forward slash TTA2. And if you're a programmer or a DevOps person and you want to learn about applying tags programmatically with, for instance, Azure PowerShell or the Azure CLI, go to timw.info forward slash TTA3. Another lesson down, you're making great progress and I'm super happy for you. In the next episode, we're gonna cover Azure Blueprints and I think that's a well-placed skill because it's going to roll up in review everything we've learned over this and the previous handful of lessons. I think you'll like it a lot. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my Pluralsight content is at timw.info forward slash PS and my website is techtrainertim.com. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks very much.